Hello and welcome to Gargar Knits. My name's Anita and I live in South Wales in the UK and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Anita Bulb and show notes can be found in the description box below. This is my April episode where I'm going to share my knitting and sewing makes that I have made this month. I hope you're all keeping well. I have got a new pair of glasses. These are meant to be anti-glare, so hopefully I shouldn't have too much glare in them. And I've also had my first COVID jab this month, so all very exciting. Right, let's get started with knitting, because I've got quite a few things today. I've got knitting, sewing and acquisitions. Now my first project is one I finished quite a while ago, but I lent my friend one of the socks. So this is a pair of socks that I have been making to my own sock recipe. I wanted to do my own, um, I wanted to knit a pair of socks that fits me perfectly. So I was going to play around for a while until I got the perfect fit, but I seem to have hit the jackpot with these. I am size five in the UK and to make these I cast on 56 stitches on a 2.5 millimeter needle. I use the Addy Sock Wonders which are the nine inch circulars and they have one needle slightly longer than the other because I want to practice knitting that way although I have to say my favorite way of knitting socks is DPNs so I might just go back to that because why struggle on with something when I know I like knitting with DPNs. So anyway, I cast 56 stitches on and I did 15 rows of rib for the cuff and then I knit 32 rows before turning the heel. The heel and the toes are from the vanilla, the vanilla latte sock pattern, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. And then after you do the decreases for the foot. I knit a further 36 rows before doing the cuff and these fit me perfectly. I'm really happy with them. This yarn is Sirdar Heart and Soul Happy Camper and the brown is just something I had in stash. They fit really nicely and they go on nicely. Sometimes the cuff is a little bit tight to get around my heel but these fit perfectly. The only thing I would do differently is lengthen the leg a little bit because I find it just a little bit short. So I'm going to add perhaps 10 rows maybe when I make my next pair. So I'm really happy with those. So that's my first finished object, a pair of socks. Now my second finished object, since I spoke to you at the beginning of April, I have managed to knit a whole jumper. I know, amazing and it's cable as well so i shall show you i will just arrange it on the hanger oh not sure which is the front and the back i'm going to go with this way here it is i have knit a little cable jumper for arthur my lunar lapin oh my hanger's fallen out thank you very much to jenny for suggesting this pattern it was a pattern on the cool crafting website it was a couple of pounds but unfortunately it's no longer available on the site it was a charity pattern um, that was a guest project by uh, Will Leckie there it is there and you get a scarf as well and all proceeds went to the Trussell Trust but the pattern was only available until the end of February and I went on the site to have a little look to see if you could get it and it's just it's not showing on there at all but there are knitting and sewing patterns for Luna Lappins on that cool crafting site if you fancy making anything so I'm really happy with that and he it fits Arthur nicely as well So they are my two finished projects in knitting and I am working on a jumper for myself, not a little one, a proper one. And this is the J sweater 
and I saw Dawn from Dawn's Days podcast. She cast this on and she was showing the pattern and I thought it was really nice. There's a little bit of colour work at the top and it's really quite easy because you it's only two colours. Um, and here it is here. I've done all the colour work. That's all there is. It's a bit hard to show you because it's bunched up on the needles. And... I'm just knitting the main part of the body now. I've already split for the sleeves. Um, and the yarn I am using is over there. I'm just going to go there. Is the yarn I'm using is Stylecraft Highland Heathers in this sort of navy blue and it's got all these different colours in it when I'm knitting with it, it reminds me of blue bottles and not that I like blue bottles but I love the colour of them if you look at them they're all shimmery and they've got purples and blues just like that and the the purple there it's not really looking the colour it's a lot brighter in person than it is on the screen and I will put the the actual colourways on the screen because I can't remember what they are rather than just look them up and tell you I'll put them on the screen so I'm really enjoying knitting that I haven't swatched because I needed some needles that I didn't have and I ordered them from Angela from Yarn and Yarns and they are the smart sticks the knit pro oh, knit pro smart sticks and I've not used those before so I didn't swatch because if I didn't get gauge, I would have had to use different needles, which is probably not the best way to look at it. But I thought oh, I'll be fine. It's just it's going to be a sort of roomy, chunky jumper. There's I haven't used those ones yet. There they are, and they've got these little measurement guides on them. I think they're every centimetre, but I mean I don't use them for that. And they're not bad. They were a little bit blunt to do the colour work. So what I did with that was I used my symphonies, Knit Pro Symphonies, the wooden coloured ones. I think, oh, here they are. I used these. They're not really sharp, but they weren't sharp enough to um, just nipple the stitches. And I do like these. The I do find that the cables are coming undone because these are interchangeable, but I think it's because there's so many stitches and I'm sort of pulling them along. So I'm just keeping an eye on that and every time it catches I know that the this join has come undone a little bit. So I'm working on that. I'm also working on my Barrett counterpane. I have done another one of the patterned ones, the squares and one of the knitted ones but I'm not going to show you that every time because it just looks the same. Every now and then when it gets really big I will, oh every now and then when it gets a bit bigger I'll show you. And then I'm on to knitting acquisitions. Really excitingly, I won a gift this month. Now, I watched the lovely Kellyanne from Yarn Tales by the Sea. And recently she was doing a giveaway for um, reaching 500 subscribers. So well done, Kellyanne. And all you had to do was she showed you some yarn and said, if you won this yarn, what would you make with them? What would you make with it? Now, I said I'd make the rye mittens because when you see this yarn, it's very bright and it's stripy. And I thought I'd make the rye mittens because they're really nice, because they're in a really nice um, fingerless glove pattern and they go right up your arm and then you can ruche them down. So I thought you would make the most of the yarn at the changing of the colours. But I've since changed my mind since I have got this yarn. And here it is. And it's from Twink Knits. Um, and it's 80% merino, 20% nylon, and it's four ply. And that isn't as bright as it is. It is really bright. I will put a picture on. I have put a picture on Instagram. But that is looking quite. Unless when. When I look at it back, it might be a bit different colour, but it's it's so, so nice and bright and cheerful and lovely. 
and although I could do the mittens we are coming into the nicer weather and I thought that was a bit of a shame and I know a lot of people say oh I'm going to make socks and I think oh what a waste it's such nice yarn but I'm going to make socks I looked on um, Ravelry for the Twink Knits yarn to see what other people have made with this because I didn't know how big the stripes would be so I just wanted to see what other people had made just to give me some inspiration and inspired I was because I found this slip stitch lines by La Maison de Saba and it's not actually the knitting pattern is free on Ravelry. It's oh, I'm looking at pointing the wrong side. It's a sort of slip stitch detail that you can put into your socks. And there was a pair of socks on Ravelry that had been made using this yarn and that pattern. I don't think it's on here. Oh, and they just look lovely. And I thought, oh, I want to do that. I've seen Tina from Simply and Stitches knitting socks and doing the slip stitches, and it's really effective and I would imagine fairly simple. I don't really want anything too complicated when I'm making the socks. So I just think that's going to just look beautiful. So I'm really looking forward to that. So thank you so much, Kellyanne. I love the yarn and I love your podcast and I'm hoping you're feeling better and you'll do a podcast soon because she hasn't been very well. Now the other yarn acquisition, it's all my fault. I was on Instagram and Ellie from Tith and Bryn put up a colourway um, that she has made recently. Oh, it's so lovely. Let me, I need my notes to tell you about this one. And she only had two skeins. And the reason for that is because Ellie has her own sheep. Now she lives in West Wales with her husband and her two small boys on a small holding and they have their own little flock of sheep and the yarn is from their sheep and she dyes it in her small holding so it's all very local and I just love the idea of the yarn being from her own sheep and here it is. Oh it's so lovely. Look at the colours. These are all my colours. I love greens and I love all the natural colours. Oh, it's beautiful. And this yarn is called Flower Meadow. And it's four ply, but it's quite a rustic yarn, she says. So I'm hoping it's not going to be too um, scratchy on my skin. Now, this yarn has been made from Barbara, Wolfie, Wanda, The Three Witches, Og, Weatherwax and Garlic, Indiana, Hairy Legs, Lamb Chops, and coal, and it is a blend of Llanwenog, Beulah, and Welsh White. I just, I just had to have it. Oh, it's so beautiful! And she sent it out so quickly. I think it arrived. I ordered it on the Wednesday. I think and it came on the Thursday, or maybe the Friday. Oh, it was so quick, and it is beautiful. And then, of course, I couldn't do anything with it because I wanted to show you. Now, as it's so beautiful. I had to find a pattern to go with it because I didn't want to just buy skeins of yarn and then not do anything with them. And I thought it would be nice to make a pattern that Ellie had designed because not only does she dye beautiful yarn, she also makes knitting patterns. And the pattern I've chosen is called the Jewels Shawl. Now I had this pattern free from Ellie a long time ago. I was going to do test knit for her and things got her away with her a bit and she she didn't have time to sort the test knits out but she very generously sent the pattern anyway so I haven't got a picture on there but I will put a picture on the screen so you can see just how beautiful it is and I believe you um, cast on a few stitches at the top then I think you increase increase and, and do all the increases and knitting with a central spine and then you put some lace work at the end and I just think that is going to look beautiful in that shawl because it will really show off the colours. So watch this space, a shawl coming here soon. So that is all my knitting. Oh and I forgot to say the um, 
The little jumper I did for Arthur, if you're interested, was done in Mariner Double Knit and it's the Royal Blue. The same wool as I used to make Harry a hat, bobble hat, while it was sewing. On to sewing. Right, I have some finished objects in sewing too. You might have noticed I'm wearing, or this top, it's not a top, it's a dress. Here it is. It's the uh, Manetta dress by Colette Patterns. I've made it a couple of times before. I made it using a very cheap Minions fabric, thick t-shirting fabric when I was first um, testing it out, when I was first learning. And it doesn't matter how long I sew for, I still feel like I'm a learner. And then I knit it, oh, knit it. I sewed one for Christmas in a cheap jersey um, Christmassy themed fabric with robins and things on which is quite nice and now I've bought this beautiful viscose jersey from Sew Me Sunshine and the colour is called Harry Blue so I had to have that didn't I and it's really pretty, oh, so soft and lovely and it's a bit of a, a strange one isn't it if you're learning to sew you're going to or you feel you should buy cheaper fabrics to practice on so that you don't spoil the nice fabrics or expensive fabrics you don't want to waste them but sewing on this was so much nicer than sewing on the cheap fabrics my sewing machine liked it a lot better for start uh, but in saying that I came across loads of problems making this dress the Minetta dress is a very simple sewing pattern and it comes with a little booklet if you get the paper version and you've got all the instructions there's three different options of how to make it and I made the version three here which is meant to be the three quarter sleeves but you know they come there that's fine I don't mind that and I made the large which is slightly bigger than my measurements but when I've made the medium before the Christmas one it was a bit tight across the old boobage so I thought it was better to be a little bit loose and I wanted it to be a bit flowy for the summer and I also lengthened the bodice by um, about an inch and I also did the same on the skirt because I wanted it to be just below my knee so in the summer I don't have to wear tights and also I wanted it to be a little bit longer in the torso because although I'm short I think it must have a long body because when I've made it before the bodice sort of comes it's not an empire line it's sort of in between an empire line and my natural waist I made me feel a bit childish so I've, I've made it a little bit longer and it now whoop, and now it's sort of sits sort of I think on my natural waist which I find much better and of course I put the pockets in this time I haven't put pockets in before I did as much as I could on the overlocker and I did try and find a tutorial how to overlock side seams with pockets in because I didn't know how to sort of pivot the the join where the pockets went round but I just went for it I did it on the overlocker and just manipulated the fabric because it's jersey you could stretch a bit and it seemed to work fine where I went wrong or had problems with the neckline you just have to fold it over um, slightly slightly I think you had to fold it over just with a small um, seam hem just with a small hem and then stitch it in place and I stitched it with the fabric facing upwards because some for some reason I thought the stitches would look neater if I did it that way and I totally missed pick catching <laughs> the um, material on the in material on the inside so all I did was I had a row of stitches around here but it wasn't it hadn't sewn the hem down and I didn't want to unpick it because it's very fine fabric so what I ended up doing was I herringbone stitched the um, hem to the thread on the inside. I'll put some pictures in so 
sort of explain. And I didn't know if it was going to work, but it did. It seems to work fine. And another problem I had was with the gathering of the skirt. You're supposed to gather it with clear elastic and I didn't have enough clear elastic. So I bought this elastic from Prim because it said it was a bit better quality, but there's hardly any, any stretch in that. And I couldn't stretch it enough to um, gather the skirt and I was trying to hold it in the sewing machine either side. Oh, my machine didn't like that. I didn't really know what to do. So I ended up gathering the skirt on my overlocker and then I sewed in the elastic once it was gathered to the right um, width. It was meant to be 32 inches all the way around. So I gathered it to that and then put this in and just really, this was just a stabiliser and the dress is roomy enough and has got not enough natural stretch in that I can get it over my head comfortably and everything. So that's so that's okay. But I was thinking, oh, this is not going to work. But I am really pleased with it now. So I'm glad about that. And I have also made some bags because these were the last few projects I was supposed to do in March and I didn't get round to. So I've made a little bucket bag here um, with the little Labradors and Westies on and then there's just Westies inside and I've used quite thick uh, interfacing to make it sort of more padded. Now I used a tutorial from Jean True Love to make this. This is the 11 inch bag. She's got a bucket bag tutorial and she suggests you cut out a square of cardboard and then cut the corners two and a half inch corners out and use that so I use that to make this bucket bag and I then used the same principle to make this little notions pouch and I just made a smaller I cut out a smaller square of the bottom because I didn't have enough fabric to you know to make it too tall and then I put a zip in and then you've got the coordinating fabric inside it's, these fabrics are gorgeous and they are from Lewis and Irene this is in, called Enchanted Wood and I'm not sure what the dog ones are called but I mean if you look them up you'll you'll recognize the Labradors on them so those two bags are finished and then on to acquisitions so I do acquisition. No, before acquisitions, I want to ask you a question. Now I'm trying to use up all my scraps. And when I was making those bags, you end up with little squares of fabric that you cut out of the corners. Now I'm turning them into little hexes, which in turn I am turning into little hexy flowers. Now these two are from my grandson's uh, Christmas bags that I made them and they had these are more sort of scraps they did have little square um, flat bottoms to the bags but these are scraps so they're a bit of a cheat but all these other ones I have done are from the scraps from making the project bags and then I've also got some of the enchanted with the navy ones which I haven't put together yet so I'm going to make a kind of memory quilt out of the flowers like like the um, crocheted memory blanket but as instead a quilt with these hexes but my question to you is not only do you get squares of fabric left when you make bags but you also get squares of the interfacing this is the thicker interfacing that I use to make the bucket bag do you have any suggestions of what I could make out of these? Because the interfacing is quite expensive and if there's something I can use them for rather than just throw them away, please let me know because I'll, I'll give it a go. So that's my little uh, ongoing work in progress really. Right, acquisitions and plans for those acquisitions. The first one isn't actually an acquisition. It's 
something I had in stash. But when I showed you my Easter makes, my sister-in-law saw the peg bag that I made for Jodie and she would like one. So I'm going to make her a peg bag next. And I, in my stash, I had this fabric from Kath Kitson. I've made a cushion out of it and some project bags, all sorts of things. So I've still got some left. I've got plenty enough left to make her a peg bag. So I'm going to make that up for her because I know she likes all things London. She likes the London buses and the old red telephone boxes and all that sort of thing. So I know she'll, she'll like that. So that was the first because it's acquisitions and pro planned projects and that's a planned project. Now, the next couple of things I bought when I went out to a shop. I went to Dunelm and I bought a few pieces of, well, a few fabrics and things for projects, planned projects. Now, Josh wants me to make him a laptop bag for his laptop. And he's asked me for, well, ages, but I did look online trying to find fabric, but I'm not the best at choosing it unless I can see it. So in Dunelm, they had this huge roll of upholstery, upholstery cotton, but I mean, it's not really, really thick. It's, um, it's a nice weight and I'm going to make him a laptop bag out of that. This, I don't know how much is on there, quite a lot, and it was 15 pounds. So I had to have that. And I was going to do a contrasting lining for him, but he's not bothered. So I'm just going to put the, the same uh, fabric inside as outside and then I've got some webbing as well just to do a strap although I'm not sure if I'll be use that I'll have to see I haven't found a pattern yet so if you do know of any good laptop case patterns please let me know um, so I'm going to do that for him and also Jody uh, wanted a kind of boob tube for sitting out in the garden, not for going anywhere, sitting out in the garden enjoying the sun so she could have her, you wouldn't have her, your straps, strap marks. She's very fair so she, she can't sunbathe as such but she just wanted to have something where this part could get a bit of the sunshine. And then I said, why don't I make you a little sheared top um, and make a sort of peplum because that would be a little bit more flattering than a boot tube even if you are just sat in the garden. Then I was looking through this book that I've had for quite a while and I saw this pattern here and I sent a picture to Jodie and said would you like me to make you a maxi dress with shearing like that instead of a boot tube and she said oh yes please that'd be lovely because she's very short and she can never get a maxi dress to fit her and this is going to be so easy to fit. I've not done shearing before, so I'll do a little bit of practicing. I've ordered some shearing elastic, but um, there's a very good, very good tutorials on YouTube. So I'm going to have a little play around with that and make her a dress. Well, that has got, I think that looks um, quite lightweight cotton fabric there. I want it quite cool and loose. Now, when I was in Dunelm, I spotted and it's a single quilt cover and you've got this white with the black spots on the top and then this is the underneath so I can see it on the back I thought I should be able to get two dresses out of that fabric hopefully I can get hopefully I can make one out of the front and one out of the back so she'll have two coordinating dresses and then if I can't get a whole one out of the um, one side then maybe I'll just put this black on the top and have that all well sort of have it like that but we'll see so that was really pleased with that it was £10 for a single quilt and she'll have a free pillowcase because I don't know what to do with a pillowcase so that was all my sewing acquisitions apart from one more and I was in Home Bargains and they had this cross stitch sampler. $1.99. Well, that had to come home with me. It's really cute. I like some of the uh, some of the animals they've used. They've used a little bit of artistic license because there's um, 
a unicorn for you. And what was the other one I liked? Oh, I don't know what that was. Oh, <laughs> a vampire bat. But I like. I don't know when I'm going to do it. But for one ninety nine, I couldn't leave it on the shelf. And it comes even with the wooden hoop and the Ada fabric and the and the thread. So one ninety nine bargain. So that's everything I've been working on this month and I've got quite a few things lined up for the next few months to keep me busy. I do have another dress I want to make but um, because I had a few problems with this one I'm just going to stick to some simple projects for May and then hopefully at the end of May, beginning of June, I want to make a nice, oh I've got the pattern to show you. I want to make this dress, the spring dress, and I like that one there. I'm going to make it a little bit longer so it's under my knees. Or I might not need to make it longer because I'm only five foot one and a half. So maybe if I made it like that, it would come lower. And I do have some fabric. I have bought some more fabric from Sew Me Sunshine for this dress, which I will show you next time. If you've liked this video please subscribe if you haven't already and give me a thumbs up and please leave me a comment. I love receiving comments and I always reply. Um, I never really say that. I don't really like to sort of say oh please subscribe but it does boost my channel so and gets my videos out to more people so I've got to say it whether I like it or not. So all that's left are my photos from our walk and there's some nice views from up on top of the mountain and some close-ups of the little sheep for you to enjoy. So take care and I shall see you all very soon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.